Hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, Satinder Sidhu. We are going to talk about uh, Xamarin forms. Very basics uh, about the Xamarin forms uh, and how everything works. So uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about the uh, Xamarin form structure. Um, in the beginning, when you open any device, uh, iPhone, Android, or any of the mobile phone, whatever you can see on the screen, the visible area, we call that a page. Uh, there are different type of pages. Uh, we will discuss them in detail in uh, further videos. Uh, but just consider that, you know, all the visible area on the screen, we call that a page. You can consider that, uh, you can compare that just like a room, that you have an area um, for a room. And now inside that area, how do you want to arrange your items? That is called a layout. Uh, you know, you, you want to put some space for, uh, you want to stack all of the items, you want to you know, define some of the items in the left corner, right corner, the bottom corner, the right corner. That is all called the layout. And then we start actually placing things like text box, date, you know, drop down, those kind of things so that is called a view so if we look at all of those things consider that you have a page all of the area which you can see on the phone consider your room layout now how do you want to structure your things uh, you know how do you want to plan your things and view is the actual items which you will put on uh, on the places either you will stack them or you will you know put them on the left side right side all that so just like we uh, spoke uh, first of all there are many kind of pages so in this video we will talk about the content page this is the default page uh, comes when you start any of uh, the xamarin application uh, it means a content page can display either a single view or a single container on the entire screen uh, so let's go into the demo and actually see that what does it actually means uh, I'm going to spin up uh, Xamarin Studio you can download Xamarin Studio for free if you go to uh, Xamarin website and you download you can download the community version of uh, Xamarin for free and you can start building apps within no time I have already downloaded Xamarin uh, community, uh, community edition so that's why these are some of the sample apps if you want to look on them but what we are going to do right now, we are going to create a new solution. So you go to file uh, and new solution. Uh, here you will see a lot of options. Uh, you have the option to target multi platforms. What does it mean that you can define? You can write the code for iPhone and Android devices in just one shot. You don't have to rewrite the code for both platforms. Even though the output will be the native, uh, you don't need to, you know, write the code separately. Uh, you can write specifically for iOS also. If you are interested to do only iOS, you can do only Android also. You can do only Mac also. So in this uh, demo, what we are going to do, we are going to use Xamarin Forms and we are going to make a multi-platform app. Uh, okay, so I have selected that. Once we click on Next, so it will ask you what name do you want to give this app uh, let's give it a name content page learning uh, in the organization identifier you can define your company name I can say so basically this will help to build you the assemblies and namespace and uh, if you have noticed that this is always in the reverse order so for example if my company steps in I will write .com first and then I will write the, the steps in. So the overall naming convention will be .com dot steps in dot content page learning, which is the app name. Uh, target platforms, uh, just like in the beginning, we have selected multi platforms. It has pre-selected Android and iOS, but still, if you have changed your mind, you want to you know target only single platform, you can uh, select one of them. In the shade code option so uh, there are two type of options for example in Xamarin we are writing the code only once and then it can be deployed to iOS and uh, Android also so there are two ways we can write the code you can either write a portable class library and or you can write a shade library 
So now when you have to select between uh, the portable class library and the shared library, the difference is how you want to keep your common code. If you are using a portable class library, you see that a portable class library itself is a kind of a uh, project where you can build the assembly, you can do the unit testing on that, and you you know you can uh, take that DLL file anywhere else also. But if you are doing a shared library, it means that uh, it's just a set of those C# -sharp files, and then those files will actually get you know uh, embedded into the Android and iOS code. And they will be compiled over there so for the demo purpose I'm just using the shared library but yes most of uh, the recommendations are you always use the port portable class library so that you can do the unit testing and all that you know uh, fun stuff I'm gonna click next uh, now it will ask me some more information like what is the project name I will keep the project name same solution name same what is the location um, yes, I will use the git for the version control and it will create another file for uh, you know uh, maintaining the git version. The last option it will ask you if you want to make an automated UI test project. Uh, I don't want to do that now just for the demo purpose. And we will click create. So now it will build a uh, folder structure. You see that right now we have three projects content page learning which is the shared project. And there is one project for Droid and there is one project for iOS. You can write your simple app without even touching these two projects. All you need to do, you need to write the code inside this shared code and it will automatically be deployed on iOS and Droid. We will see that in a few seconds. Uh, there are two files. Uh, actually, there is one file which is very important in uh, the shared code app.xml. Um, uh, once you click the C sharp code, you see that this is the bootstrap uh, this is the place where we are telling the entire app when we are you know starting the app that which page we want to load as uh, as the root page so right now and the main page is as actually the placeholder which contains the name of the page so right now we this is the start of the project it is all we it it already created one page content page learning page based on the naming convention we gave as the starting page of this app so now let's create a new page I'm gonna click this one and add I will say new file and I will give it a name page page one page one uh, make sure when you're adding a new files you select XAML option there are two options you can write the co entire code without XAML also but once you start using XAML you will see that your life becomes much easier uh, if you want to use without XAML yes you're feel free to do that there is no restriction that you have to write the code in XAML uh, I do page one so you see that now we have two pages one is uh, page one dot XAML and another one is page one dot XAML dot CS and now coming here we can change this to new page one that's it so it means now this will be our starting point for doing any of the work so let's see what is inside this page so right now this page is blank and by default whenever Xamarin creates any page the page is always a content page you see this is a content page uh, what can we do inside the content page just like we saw in uh, the overall structure that you have a page then you have a layout and then we start inserting the stuff into that if we don't use the layout inside this yes you can do without using the layout also but you remember you can do only one view at that time so let's put the view stack layout view so stack layout is one of the view uh, which is most commonly being used it means you can stack the items like you can you can put just like on the bookshelf you can put the first book then the second book on the top of that third book fourth book fifth book sixth book like that so this is the stack layout this is our stack layout and now view let's put something inside the view uh, for example let me make a simple box and change its background background color to blue Okay, and end of the box. And let's also change the background color of uh, 
stack layout so that we can differentiate between uh, this layout and the view let me change its background color to yellow okay and you if you want to format the code you can hit ctrl i in mac it formats your code and now let's run that uh, before we run that we need to set one of the code uh, one of the device as a startup see we didn't write any code into ios so and we are just writing it to this one let's hit start and let's see so basically what should happen we should have a simple uh, simple screen i don't think it will show something because we didn't put anything in, in that stuff so you see we see some section as a blue and rest of the section as a yellow so this all yellow section is a stack layout and box view is blue right now that box view is sitting on top of the screen because this is a stack layout let's start putting a few more items into this one let me put this is a box view and then i can put another view uh, there is another view called entry which means it is uh, it's like a text box if you do asp.net i'm a i'm an entry right uh, let's put few more controls let's put date picker date picker means uh, you can select a date from the date picker uh, editor editor is a, like a text area uh, where you can write multiple lines of text i'm an editor now uh, we're just gonna put some stuff and then we'll beautify this thing so all of these are views this is one view this is another view this is third view this is fourth view and now because they are in the stack layout they will be stacked on behind one behind another one let's see how do they look like so first of all we should have the box views with the blue background then we should have a text box yep see exactly in the same format this is a entry you can type anything here and now this is the date select date picker you can pick any date from this one once you click done that date will come into this one and this is the editor there you can write multiple lines uh, but we still have the entire area covered and all that kind of stuff so now let's see some uh, few more interesting properties some basic interesting properties uh, which we need to you know beautify our project uh, layout margins so right now you saw that layout was completely merged into the entire section and now we want to give some space so that you know we can give some margin so we have the property called margin and the format is you always start from the left then top right and bottom so just like you see <coughs> you, you see on the screen uh, inside the page uh, the layout we can define the margin at how much margin we want to you know provide from the page another property is called padding padding is how much space you want to keep in inside of the layout uh, for those cells you see this uh, you see the screen layout and then view and then inside the stuff is called the padding so now let's see that how does it actually work uh, let's go back to in our code this is how it looks like right now and if we go to the studio let's go to the stack layout and let me say margin you can say margin like this one also what does this mean that it will apply the same margin to the left top right and bottom but you can define the margin exclusively separately for all of the sides also so let me do that let me do 10 for left 30 for top 10 for right 20 for bottom just for the demo purpose so that we can actually see the difference how they're actually working yep you see that now we have a space on the left hand side top hand side right hand side and the bottom side so this was the margin but we still have these things touching the corners so to to handle that scenario so what we do we do the padding uh, let me do straight 10 so this is also works in the same way if you're giving the single value it will be applied to all of uh, the compo all of the sides but if you want to define it exclusively uh, you can do left top right and bottom principle also yep so now you see that we have the spacing inside this at this place also right that was i think it was very simple 
a uh, couple of uh, other properties which we can uh, try out uh, vertical options uh, if I do and let's see what happens now so it means in the stack layout we have mentioned that the vertical alignment should start from the end uh, we didn't say that uh, you know bottom we said end because these things are designed in such a way that you know they are globalized across all the countries so things some languages are starting from left to right which we usually do like English and other languages but some languages start from right to left so it means vertical option means it start from the end if it in it, it like in English it will start from the bottom but if it's another country it can start from the starting also so now it is starting from the end so let's do a quick review what we uh, did study so far so we did study that uh, you know basics uh, in uh, examining forms uh, this is the, I think the important stuff so we have the page inside the page you can define a layout and then inside the layout you can define views like all of the controls which you want to do that so in this video we did study the content page and for the videos we will study uh, the other type of pages also thank you so much for uh, watching the video if you have any comments or any uh, concerns please let me know you can leave your comments have a good day bye bye